Okay, so right, MBTI is a simplification. So there is more than one ENTP out there. And when you take two ENTPs and you put them together, you're going to notice that they're going to act very differently to one another. You know, all ENTPs, they have more similarities than they have differences. And we should not try to uh, make the ENTP subtype into something it's not. So you can't say there is an ENFP version of the ENTP. No, that's an ENFP. <laughs> so what you can say, however, is that there's ENTPs out there that are unusually extroverted and ENTPs out there that are a bit more ambiverted extroverts. There are ENTPs out there that are unusually intuitive and those that are a little bit more practical. There are ENTPs out there that are unusually strong in thinking and those that are a bit more developed in their feeling. And then you have finally those that are unusually strong in perceiving and <laughs> those that are kind of balanced when it comes to perceiving and judging, but still perceiving types. So on the whole, you're still going to be extroverted, still intuitive, still thinking, still perceiving, but uh, you're going to meet people out there that are going to make you doubt it. So you talk to some ENTP out there and you're going to notice he's so crazy, you know, he's always up to something. He always has a project in his mind. He's always like this big opportunity and oh, tomorrow we got to go there and oh, we got to try this and we got to go to that place and we got to meet those people and we got to get that job or we got to go into this career. We got to try this up, this start up this project. And then you look at yourself and you go, oh, I'm not like that, you know, I tend to have lots of ideas and I like to start up projects, but not in that extent, not in that way, uh, uh, that's, that's just not me. So what you want to do then is you want to look into being another subtype. Okay, so there are four subtypes, the extroverted ENTPs, the intuitive ENTPs, the thinking ENTPs, and the perceiving ENTPs. The extroverts, they are the people that believe sleep is for boring people, you know, they're always up to something, they always so focused on the next day, they can't fall asleep because they're so focused on what they want to do tomorrow, you know, they can't uh, stop or think because they are so eager, so excited to try up something new or to go somewhere to do something so they have to go right now you know they have a low developed inhibition reflex in their mind basically th when they make mistakes their mind doesn't note this they don't notice that they make mistakes they don't fear doing the wrong thing or saying something stupid or uh, accidentally making a mistake or being clumsy they they're okay with it. They'll just pile on forward. They just keep going. Okay, I tripped, but I get up and I keep going. So they don't even like to talk about it. They don't like to talk about the fact that, oh, I can trip, I can fall, I can make mistakes, I can do stupid things. Oh, that's not important. The most important thing is I get there. I will get there faster than anyone else. I'll just go, 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 and I'll get there as fast as possible. Take it uh, against the perceiving type and you get someone who is very, very different in this regard. So. You have those people out there, the perceiving types, and they're like the corner cutters. So now what you get there is uh, this is ty a type that likes to observe. They like to observe what are you going to do next? What is going to happen after this? And wh where are you going to go now? And what's, go what's going to end up happening in this situation? And what are we going to get now? And what's going to happen? So they're constantly predicting the immediate short-term future. They're always connecting dots. Okay, if that person said that, that must mean they have that intention and that goal. So if I do that or act in this way, they will say that and then I will get there and then I will be able to win that argument. So they have these abilities to be really good in discussions and really good in response to other people. They're able to read you and figure you out. Uh, it's like they, they just do it magically. They just know ex instantly what you're going to say next. They, uh, they know your st end of your sentence and they can say it for you. You know, they can say it for you. So, oh, that's where you're going. Oh, so that's where you intend to head. And okay, that's not going to work and because of that and that reason. So connecting all these dots and seeing all these possibilities that could happen. Either he will say this or that or that. It's like they formulate magically, they run through options. So he's either going to do A, B, C or D. So they will go through all these options. Will he do A? If he does A, what will I do? What will I say? And then they go, it's like they're basically uh, spiraling out like uh, tree shaped patterns of ideas and thoughts that connect to each other loosely. They draw lines, connect the dots, they figure things out and it's just going to happen very, very quickly to this type. So they're going to be one step ahead of everyone else. But they're also going to be very, very inconsistent. So 
They will say they're gonna show up tomorrow and that they will help out, but then they will find something better to do. And they will uh, say that, yeah, I will be there and I'll take, finish it on time. But then they, when they get to the deadline, it's like, oh, but that's more and more fun and this is more interesting and oh, I really want to do that. So in every moment, anything can change with this type. This is the true wild card. So perhaps we should call it the wild card subtype, the ENTP perceiving subtype, the wild card. The person that will never say what you expect, that will always surprise you, that will always uh, be one step ahead of you. The person that uh, is going to be literally the joker of the car 52 cards. The person that can mean anything at any moment and say anything at any possible time. Besides these two, the extrovert and the perceiving type, we've got the intuitive ENTP, the loose screw, as I could call it. Uh, the loose screw is an ENTP that um, is just insatiably curious. They want to learn everything about everything. They're basically that kind of person that wants to know, why did you do that? And what does this mean? How does that work? And how does this system work? And what happens if I press that button? And what happens if I try that? Okay, let's try. Let's t map this out. Let's do an experiment. Let's uh, make a prediction. And let's try to see if we can figure it out. So they're constantly trying to figure things out. And they're constantly working on these new ideas. And they're constantly working on these new possibilities. They're learning different things every, every week it's a new study uh, economics politics uh, uh, engineering like they can be interested in anything you know how do uh, like seahorses mates that's a really interesting question for an intuitive <laughs> subtype basically you want to figure things out and you know what tends to happen with this type is they cut corners you know they as soon as they figured it out they get bored or as soon as it starts to become a grind of facts then as they start feeling oh i'm gonna tune out and do something else so they cut corners or they start up projects but they never finish it you know oh i'm gonna study to be a doctor but then again uh, it sounds really interesting to study rocket engineering and oh uh, actually i think maybe i'm meant to be uh physicist or maybe it's supposed to be that I should be an inventor you know so they will go through all these options and they'll jump from thing to thing and they will constantly start up projects but they'll never finish it so they'll have all these bright ideas they will be full of ideas but when will they ever do it and if they do it will they do it for real will they actually do it or will they half ass it so will they cut corners will they uh, end up uh, building something full of loose screws that's going to fall apart the second you touch it you know you can never really know what's going to happen with this type or what they're going to do or how things are going to turn out because yeah uh, they don't do all the data they don't go over all the details is everything attached properly have I gone through all the routines have I looked at all the possible scenarios that could happen have I made sure that all the precautions have been taken have I made sure that uh, the, have I considered safety have I considered uh, economics have I considered taxes have I considered business sell, sales and the, all those things there kind of ignored and so somebody else ends up having to pick it up for them or they can find themselves like uh, in these projects neglecting important duties and chores so yeah oh uh, picking up your kid off the daycare paying your taxes on time you know all those things can be very annoying for this type you know because they distract you from all these curious things that you want to do and all those things you're learning about and all those things that you're currently working on so it can be very difficult for this type when things get rough or tough or repetitive. And here's when they really, really struggle. And that's why it's interesting to compare this type to the thinking ENTP subtype. Uh, so there you have like the mad inventor. And this is a person uh, you can best recognize for their astounding willpower. You know, they, they, they are exceptionally strong in thinking. So what they do is they not only have ideas but they also know how to monetize it and sell it and to put it on the market and how to take care of it you know this type is usually very very skilled it's a person that will know okay this needs that and if I do that I need to work on this and I need that kind of person to help me with that and I need to make sure that uh, this doesn't happen so they, they're able to look at all these things take these mechanisms look at possibilities look at possible consequences of their decisions to run through all these things but on the flip side, they are really sometimes unethical and selfish people, you know. 
Uh, it can be very difficult for this type to do anything at all for free. Why should I show up at my grandma for her birthday? Why do I have to do it? Oh my god, it's so annoying. <laughs> it can be difficult for this type to consider rules and uh, limitations and uh, ethical concerns. It can be difficult for this type when other people uh, show them or share them their feelings. So if another person is opening up to you about something you said or something that hurt them or something that was difficult for them, this type can be like, are you done yet? I have a meeting I have to go to. And that's often what this type is concerned with, you know, that uh, sales target, that goal, getting the highest sales, getting the best result, going there the fastest, being the most productive, you know, it doesn't care who you have to jump over to get there, it doesn't matter uh, who you have to beat or who will fall or who, what will have to be compromised in order to get this result, you know. Uh, who cares about the, the fact that I ripped the person off with all their money? Uh, I got the sale, I got the deal, and that's their problem. <laughs> their, their problem is their problem, not my problem. So this person cannot see or take responsibility for any negative consequences that could happen because on, on their behalf or due to their needs or their interests. It's just their interests. So here you have it, four different subtypes, uh, the extroverted ENTP, the intuitive ENTP, the thinking ENTP, and the perceiving ENTP. Which one of these do you relate to the most and which one feels the most like you? Uh, what I've ended up doing with subtypes is I've come to realize that uh, yeah, you can't really say there is a person that only uses one function. You can't say there is an ENTP that only does NE or an ENTP that only does TE or so on. You have to really look at the whole. So you can see all the functions in all the descriptions I wrote there. You can see that it's still an ENTP. I'm not building a subtype system where uh, there are ENTPs that are magically like ISFJs or ISTPs. No, they're still ENTPs. All of these people still sound real as ENTPs. ENTPs, they all are recognizable <laughs> for their values, their interests, you know, their thirst for achievements, for opportunities, for novelty, for a change, for new ideas, for possibilities, for status, for success, for, uh, you know, making it, doing it, completing it. And uh, that's always going to be why you're an ENTP and not any other personality type. So even if you meet up with other ENTPs and you end up feeling a bit different to them or you notice they're a bit more outgoing or you notice they're a bit more crazy uh, or you notice they're a bit more eccentric or fast forward or um, a bit more logical than you or a bit more selfish, don't necessarily take that as an excuse that you're a different type than them. Take it as an interesting examination of how development and type can be two equally important parts of the equation. Let's say type is 50% and development is 50%. And let's say type establishes some base values and motivations that are present in all of you as ENTPs and development as who you have learned to act or behave as within to, in order to get what you want or what you value, or what motivates you the most. Yes, these were the four subtypes. Thanks for watching and uh, hope to see you all in the next video.